Hey everyone, Shasta here for 1077 The Bone and the Rock Your Life podcast. It is a dual interview today because this is a very special interview with two amazing ladies, Heather and Heidi. So it's Heidi um, Stipe. Am I saying that right or is it Step? It's Step. Okay. Who is the regional director for the Pink Ribbon Girls here in the Bay Area. And then we have Heather Salazar, who is our CEO, and she's on an iPhone. So we may have a little bit of some uh, tricky business happening today, but we're making this work. So thank you, ladies, so much for being here to talk about Pink Ribbon Girls today. This is so special. Thank, thank you so you much for having us. You are so welcome. So Heidi is a female bonehead, which by, uh, by the way, can I just say anytime I meet a female member of the bonehead family, it makes my heart explode because we don't have as many as the fellas. So I just feel like I'm already in really great company here. So tell everybody how you sort of came to find me and the bone and make this happen. Um, well, for me, it was just the morning commute to work. Um, I'm a former high school teacher. And so you need some levity in the morning to not go into the day so seriously. And um, <laughs> your the morning shower just, it was just awesome for me. So lots of great laughs. Um, I did like, you know, so many of the segments just were just awesome. I love the Dick and Mattel marketers. I know it's so stupid. <laughs> Sometimes it was really bad and I'd be like, all right, I'm not even going <laughs> to sit in my car for the rest of this one. But the majority of them, I was, I just, I was always um, in disbelief that people could really stay on the phone that long with somebody, <laughs> but I know. loved it. I would sit in my car until I, they, most of them finished and then go in and tackle my, my juniors and seniors. So I loved it. Um, Love listening to all of your stories, Oklahoma stories, vegetarian stories, and growing up predominantly like at a racetrack. My brother was a professional flat tracker. So I've always been around boys. And so like hearing you talk about like, like with them, because they are so just off um, yeah. and, and your ability to deal with their offness. <laughs> and I came back every day. Right. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where. I love it. So I love that, Heidi. I mean, I was not fishing for compliments, but I will say thank you for that. Um, and, and I do want to actually point out, you know, that we don't take ourselves or a life too seriously on the show. And I think there is a place for that in the world. I know a lot of people, um, you know, females might have something to say about things that we do, for instance, Tata Tuesday, uh, mm -hmm. which we will talk about here, but you know, Lamont Tonelli, they're really, really good humans. They're good men. They take very yep. good care of me. They're my biggest advocates and, uh, you know, they're silly and wild and crazy on the air, but it all comes from a great place and they always mean well. And Tata Tuesday is really what connected me to you ladies working with Pink Ribbon Girls because Lamont and Tonelli have done this program for years and they have raised, I don't even know how much money. I mean, tens of thousands, I, I think it's over a hundred thousand dollars at least at this wow. point for breast cancer over the years. So, you know, it's something that we sort of are cheeky with, right? But we also do some good as well. So I appreciate that you see that for what it is and appreciate it too. I think you can have fun and do some good at the same time. I totally we, agree with you. Yes. And they do stuff in the Midwest um, along the same lines um, with Pink Ribbon Girls and some of the, the local organizations. So um, so when I was talking with some of my counterparts with Pink Ribbon Girls in the Midwest, I was like, oh, and that's kind of ultimately why I was like, well, I'm going to reach out to them because I know they do this. So I'm so glad you did. Well, whenever you guys connected with me, you sent over an article that I think was from People Magazine, if I remember correctly. And it was about Heather. So Heather Salazar, CEO of Pink Ram and Girls, your story is so beyond incredible. And I'm just going to sort of give the elevator version of it, the real quick version, and then we can dive in. But from what I was reading, it came to be uh, because you were helping a neighbor who had breast cancer cancer and she had a small little girl and she was going to have to place her in foster care because she wasn't able to raise her. And you came in like a saint and <laughs> took that child, adopted her into your family and have raised her because that woman eventually passed away. Uh, God rest her soul. And she's an angel now to you, I'm sure. And uh -huh. then not very long after that, you came right. down with the same cancer that this woman had. Am I getting all that correct? Yes. Yes. So the neighbor was the midwife who delivered the baby. So okay. she was delivered and knew um, Lexi's mom. And so we went and met her. She was raised in foster care, Lexi's mom, 17 different foster care homes. And she rode home from her mastectomy on a public transportation. Like she had zero support, which is why with PRG, which we'll get to later, we do, we would not give up on the rights to treatment. So fast forward, we took care of her. We took care of her mom, but I'll be real with you. And this is me being very vulnerable. 
I honestly had no idea young women could get breast cancer. I thought, okay, was it her lifestyle? She, you know, she has had a rough life. Why in the world with this 20, I mean, she was 23. She was 24. 24 when she passed away. And so literally her last words were to me, to me were like, don't forget to tell everyone to do a self breast exam. Don't mm -hmm. forget how young people can do can and will get breast cancer. And I was just like, eh. I mean, I really just was like, yeah, whatever. And, um, the next year it was, it took a lot. We had four kids under seven to adjust to our family and adjust to everything that she was going through. And so then when my husband and I went away for our anniversary, a year after we had Lexi, I did my first ever self breast exam. So like if Alexis wouldn't have told me that there's no way I would have really known. Cause I don't feel like we talked about it a lot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like so self breast exams and things like that. And so, yeah. And then I was diagnosed with the exact same kind of aggressive breast cancer as Lexi's mom. It was that earlier is, stage, like it was early stage and hers was caught late, but it was super aggressive. I mean, what an incredible sort of cosmic story, you know, that right. whole full circle thing. And then you got really great treatment that wasn't even, was it approved at the time? No, it wasn't approved at the time, which is why I had to go to like a further research hospital. And, um, I was one of the first people that got it for early stage breast cancer. So she, Alexis, which Lexi's mom is named Alexis, yeah. got this drug, Herceptin, for late stage breast cancer. And it was doing great for late stage breast cancer. Like it gives them quality of life and longer and whatever, but we were the first group to get it for early stage breast cancer. And it's really been the only miracle, true miracle drug we've seen in breast cancer treatment since then. It's like a monocle body. It's called Herceptin and it takes the cancer cell and recreates it into a healthy cell and it doesn't touch the healthy cells. Cause you know how chemotherapy kills all of your cells. Right. Right. I had to do chemotherapy too. I didn't get out of that because the clinical trial was with chemotherapy and this drug. But I, I mean, if I wouldn't have done a self breast exam, I was 31. So I would have been dead before mammogram. Wow. Yeah, exactly. I had a scare a few years ago that I've actually never talked about publicly until this moment. Wow. And I always felt weird about talking about it because I ended up not having breast cancer. Thank the good Lord above. Yeah. So I didn't want to bring attention to myself and be like, Oh, look at me. I had this thing. So I just never said anything, but I think what's important is that it is good to talk about it because other women need to be reminded self check, yeah. right? I checked yeah. my doctor checked. We found something turned out. Right. I just have really thick uh, breast tissue, very dense. And so, but that makes me more susceptible to breast cancer. The breast cancer right. So even before 40, I I had to start getting mammograms and I have to get them every six months versus every year. So these are important conversations to have because you're right, Heather, women can get it at any age and men too right. uh, can get it at any age. And it's something that we do need to be checking for. And I think your story is important. I do have to put a plug in because you have no idea how many women have to get a call back, get a biopsy. They get scared. They don't go back. Yeah. And realistically, most of those times are, you know, it's 85% that it's a cyst or whatever. So we do need people, but the, the mental anguish that you go through when thinking it could be, oh. cause like for me, it was the same day. So it was a biopsy oh, okay. the next day I was called, it was breast cancer. So, but for all of you, that's something we're trying to work on really actually a lot, especially in the Bay area, we're working with an AI company that, that, that people like you wouldn't have to wait so long that you could tell immediately that it's a false positive. So it is, it is one of the number one things we deal with from a peer perspective, which is why I wanted to say your story is important. Wow. That's so good to know. I would never would have thought about it like that because it is, it's, it does drive you crazy. You know, I think I waited over a week or something for the test results and the phone call and you're just the whole time, your mind just goes to worst yes. case scenario. You can't help that. I think that's human nature. Um, you know, and it's just, it's a horrific feeling. So thank you for, for explaining that. Cause I always felt sort of weird about it and it's I'm an so important. Book. Right. Yeah. And, and Heidi, you know, you listen to the show. I mean, I tell everything, you know, I mean, the night before I gave birth to my son, I left a voicemail that was, that went on the air the next day, telling everybody, Hey, I'm going into labor. I mean, I am an open book, but this right. thing felt different. It felt like, I don't want to like, I don't want to say woe is me, but I'm right. glad to know that. And so now I will speak. It's important. It. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate that. Sure. So what you did then, so then came pink ribbon girls. How did you make this jump from getting your daughter and then going through breast cancer yourself and then turning it into what is something so incredible now. So, uh, what was so, that story? So 
so again, full disclosure, I'm 16 years cancer free and which is awesome. Wonderful. And PRG is we're heading into our 10th year. So to be completely transparent for six years, I was pretty pissed off that this happened to me. I was angry and I was, I hated the pink ribbon and everything it entailed. You know, I hated what it stood for. I didn't know if we were really getting anywhere in a cure. And basically this one lady that I was in treatment with, um, who actually got the, was for 10 years with late stage breast cancer on this drug Herceptin. She lived 10 quality years. Mm. And right before her death, she said, Heather, you don't use my death as an excuse. You know, you know what you were called to do. Like I was doing research. You were going to do the care side of things. And I went home that night and wrote the grants for meals, house cleaning, rides to treatment and peer support because, and basically I took what my community did for me and I put it into a program that they would bring meals. They would make sure I got to treatment. And, um, the thing I felt like we were just greatly missing was peer support because no one talked about it. And every time when my husband couldn't go to treatment with me, they always thought it was my mom. Mm -hmm. They never thought it was me going in for treatment. Sure. So it's very a lonely, a a lonely place. So that's kind of how, how it got into that. And, um, we applied for a grant through the Lester and Sue Smith foundation. He's a Texas man. I clearly we're not from Texas. You don't get grants unless you have money and um, sustainability. We had no money and a pipe dream, right? And he was a businessman though. So he didn't look at like a normal grant foundation, like where we get grants from today. And he announced it on the Ellen show. We were one of 20 and $45,000 matching grants. And our budget then nine years ago was a hundred thousand dollars and a local philanthropist matched it. And that's how we started. Wow. This was so written in the stars. That is incredible to hear. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing that you went ahead and took the leap, although I'm sure no pressure. You've had two moments where women have come to you. Like you need to, you know, carry yes, this legacy right. on. Right. <laughs> so right. good on you for actually doing so. Uh, but I think it's so important. You know, you, you do point out that, you know, like you said, public transit, like I can't imagine going through like treatment and then having to get on a bus or, you know, a a train or whatever and get home and carrying your own stuff. And, you know, cause you, I'm sure have very little energy and you're exhausted and you feel alone in the world. So the rides, I mean, that's just something that you don't think of, but how important. Yeah. And before Uber nine years ago, especially in there was no Uber. And so like, I was trying to figure out how to get people like, let's say from, you know, that lived in Mountain View to East Bay to this, it was very hard to figure it out, but I refused to give up on it because of Lexi's mom. I can't imagine that. And so those things were crazy. And and again, at the beginning, I was like, I'm never going to fundraise. I'm never going to ask for money. I'm going to sit with every single mom and know their kids and make sure they're not scared. And, you know, by month three, we had 400 meals and we weren't shipping them. So 400 people, we were trying to drive all over because we didn't know you could ship the meals or whatever. And so then I was like, I I might have to quit. Like, how are we going to do this? And, um, we called the chef and shipped the meals and then fast forward, um, to the Bay area. I don't know how much time we have, but basically I met this guy in a Phoenix airport with Lexi. So Lexi was playing soccer in Phoenix. And I always say, if you, um, you know, fly to a soccer game in Phoenix and you live in Ohio, you're clearly in a cult. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I would agree. I know nothing about soccer. And of course I can say that, you know, she's a crazy athlete because she doesn't have art, my genes. <laughs> and so <laughs> this guy sitting beside me and, you know, I'm answering all these emails and I'm wondering how I'm going to keep up with PRG. And Lexi comes up and says, um, can I have $5 for Starbucks mom? And I said, sure. And he goes, uh, did you adopt her? And I was like, uh, clearly like, <laughs> like, excuse me. She's completely African-American. I was like, clearly, I don't have time for you. And he was just like, can you tell me your story? And so I told him like the 10 minute version. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm a VC. And we're working with a guy in Silicon Valley that's creating this AI. And the guy that created it helped launch Amazon into a multi-level platform. And I was like, what? And so that's kind of how we got into the Bay area. Wow. Again, and going back to cosmic, I'm so going to be that hippy dippy girl right now, yeah. but this was truly meant to be. And yes, it valid to point out that Lexi is of a different race, although does not matter yeah. in my opinion, no. nor no. to anyone involved in this. Um, but I, how old was Lexi when you got her? So this is the greatest thing. So she was 10 months old when we got her and, um, she's going to be 20 on Sunday. 
Oh my gosh. She's a full fledged lady now. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yes, she is. And what and an so- incredible thing for her to have from her mother, this legacy, yeah. ongoing legacy that you have built. That's beautiful. She's just, she's awesome about it. And, you know, when you fast forward a little bit more, um, we, after we met these people in the Bay area, we were on the today show. And so I, I say, this is important because I was on with Joan London, which she's freaking awesome, by the way. Amazing. Oh my God. Amazing. I want to be here when I grow up and yeah. she listened to the story and she just gave one piece of advice, but we've like used it as we continue to grow. She's like, if you can operate, make your program seamless where they can be delivered anywhere. And you can operate in the Bay area or Seattle or the West coast. Mm-hmm you can operate anywhere because they're different. It's different than the Midwest. Cause we were basically in Ohio, Missouri, like Midwest. And I think it's so true. Like we made it in the Bay area with more services than ever during COVID when I, we couldn't fundraise. Oh my gosh. That sounds like a nightmare. I mean, that's crazy. That's why I'm so excited that you guys reached out to us and that we can partner with you to, to help push great events you have, you know, when you are fundraising or any way to get involved, because this is such a special thing. And I love the tie-in with pink ribbon girls to Tata Tuesday and just having more ladies in our bonehead family is just so awesome. So you do have an event coming up pretty soon. Actually, is it uh, Saturday, the 28th? Yes. And I can let Heidi talk about it because she's yeah. planning to help with it. Go for it. We have um, an outside event uh, down in um, Los Altos Hills at a private residence, but we are selling individual tickets for, for folks who'd like to come. Um, it's a dinner. There's an auction. We'll have hear from clients and social workers who have been impacted by Pink Ribbon Girls in the Bay Area. Um, a lot of the people who have been a part of Pink Ribbon Girls since its inception in the Bay Area will also be a part of it. And we're really excited um, because it's our inaugural event. And um, we have um, Santa Clara County, uh, uh, he's not a councilman, sorry. Are you gonna, I know, um, Joe Simidian is his name, but he's coming as one of our speakers. And um, we have been so fortunate to work with um, uh, Santa Clara Valley Med. They have been one of our largest supporters um, in the Bay and without them, we would not be able to do a lot of this uh, services that we do offer. And then we have a lot of private donors too, who, as well. And, and we have corporate sponsors like Sun Basket. They're the ones who make our meals so that we can send them. And what's cool about the meals is that um, typically it's the whole, like everybody in your house. So if you, if you have five people in your house, we send five meals three times a week for them or three meals, sorry. So it's three meals per person over a week. So they, they just have you know, giving them that peace of mind. I mean, I talked with this lady, um, she's in San Francisco and, and she called because she wanted to donate her car to us and oh God bless God. her heart. And, and so I called her back and we were talking and, and I asked her, I said, so tell me about your car. Um, cause we have gift agreements, right. That we, because sure. we are a nonprofit and she's like, well, it's a, it's a 1999 Volvo and the battery doesn't work. And I, I mean, this, like, but she felt so compelled that, that because we had provided her with rides and food that she needed to give back to us. And, uh-huh. and that story is just one of so many. We have a lady who was renting a room and um, she refused our food service. And so when she refused the food service, you know, the, our program team is like, why is she refu- refusing the food? Like, this is like the one thing that everybody wants, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of one of those basic needs. And come to find out she was renting a room and she didn't have a refrigerator, so she couldn't keep it. So pink ribbon girls bought her a refrigerator because she needed to be able to have, like, she has to have healthy food, right? Like that's part of the treatment. And so, so when we think about those kinds of things, I mean, that's why we're doing what we're doing. And the inaugural event that we're having next weekend is really about our demand has increased incredibly in the Bay area, which is awesome. Um, but our, we are in the very beginning of brand building and getting awareness about what we do. And, um, you know, we, we need to tap in to, we've tapped into the hospitals. We're working with them there. We're building relationships with them, but, um, you know, there are a lot of families in the Bay area who could benefit from what we serve and, and it, we fill the gap, right? Like it's, yeah. it's that civil society coming in, filling the gap where the government and your insurance or your healthcare providers, like they can't do it. We can, and we have the infrastructure and we're excited to do it and we want to do it. And so that's why we're having the event next Saturday to, to fund it so we can, can keep our mission going in the Bay. 
Wow. I love this. I I couldn't love it more. I mean, supporting women dealing with breast cancer or any kind of gynecological cancer as well, uh, providing that support, rides, food, basic necessities that are just so tricky when you're going through times of strife, which, you know, a lot of people have been dealing with obviously recently. Uh, This is so incredibly important. So God bless you ladies for doing such incredible work. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. I'm going to show you something. Come here, girl. Yeah. This is real life. They're right here. I love it. Trying to I love load it. the car from college. So you need to meet them. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, ladies. Oh my gosh. This is so, you're t- moving them to college. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they, they think they're, they think they're twins. <laughs> they are. They are. They're adorable. Beautiful girls. Oh my gosh. Like, this is real life. I was like, oh my word. This is so what we call right. mama mod ta- multitasking. That, mama that's multitasking, right. right? <laughs> that's right. That's well, right. I'll let you guys go. Um, so I want to make sure we get the information we need out there. Pinkribbongirls.org. That's where yes. people can get involved. All the information on the event on Saturday the 28th is up there as well. So Heather and Heidi, again, thank you for doing the Lord's work. This is such incredible stuff. And I'm always here to help you any way that I can. Oh, we will. We, we have your number now. That's bad. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you use it. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.